All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to the Culture Wave Media Network. I'm going to be one of your hosts today. I'm Mark Iacobino, joined by Vinny Albano. Hello, hello. And we're going to be talking some more anime today. We're going to be talking about Uzumaki by Junji Ito. We had already talked about episodes one and two. Uh, I think the whole internet is very aware of the cataclysmic mm. fall off of this show from the first episode to the second one from a pacing point of view and especially from an animation point of view. And today we're going to be talking about the final two episodes because there was no need to talk about this week to week. So we'll be talking about three and four, the finale, the wrap up, and it's a bit more of the same. Uh, the pacing is yeah. is pretty terrible. Uh, the animation is pretty terrible in some locations. Yeah. I will say episode three, I thought the imagery, I thought the ideas presented, the whole hospital thing was pretty horrifying for me. I, I will admit, even with the animation not being the best, I was like, this is scary. I see the I see the writing on the wall here uh, of imagining reading this for the first time and this horrifying situation of the the maternity ward essentially going around sucking people's blood. Like that was crazy. Um but then, you know, the pacing, it just, you know, we have this whole little thing and then we jump into the next arc and the next thing, next thing, next thing, next thing, next thing. And then yeah. the whole thing's blown out of proportion. So, Vinny, you had read it. This is your this is your copy of Uzumaki. How did you feel mm. about the uh, the finale and the, the episode three for this show? Yeah, ah, dude, this is like it's so disappointing. Mm. And we talked about I feel like we're going to be retreading a lot of our thoughts in our episode two review. Because in this in our episode two review, I mentioned how this is so disappointing because this is a manga that's so iconic. This is an anime adaptation that was like pushed back and hyped up for years. I remember this was supposed to come out like two years ago. Yeah. And uh and it's all falling apart in front of our eyes, quite literally. <laughs> like from episode one to episode two. And it's like I think it's I think episodes three and four from a technical standpoint are not as bad yeah. as episode two episode two was like very obviously like there was entire freeze frames people like just characters weren't even moving uh characters were animated terribly i think episode three and four are a lot more passable not that it's a uh in, not that it's, it's not an improvement <laughs> yeah, yeah it's far from an improvement it's far on the level of episode one uh but definitely something I would like to point out where it's like it, it wasn't as uh, a tro I wasn't raising my hands and fists and being like, oh, my God, this is. But it is really bad. still. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you mentioned the pacing like I had a moment where the maternity ward arc ends. I thought the episode was going to end. I was like, oh, wow. Like, I remember that reading that in the manga, that being really cool. And obviously the execution here could have been better, a lot better. Uh, but I was like, okay, I'm pleasantly surprised with what they were able to do here compared to episode two. Uh, and then I checked the runtime because I thought the episode was going to end and it was only halfway. I'm like, wait, whoa, Damn. you're telling me we're going to fit even more like that already went by. Like, like you're trying to tell me that we're going to fit even more in mm -hmm. the next 14 minutes. And they, they did the jack in the box which is a entire chapter standalone in, in the manga oh my god that where... that i i i forgot that happened yeah, because it yeah. was maybe one scene i yeah. completely forgot that happened dude it is so bizarre how terribly paced this is it is going so fast to the point where you're just exhausted and shit is just happening and appearing and it makes no sense because we talked about the story structure being changed where now uh the episodic manga where it's like tale after tale after tale is now being overlapped where a tale is introduced while another tale is going on and we have the jack in box character being introduced in a post credit scene of the last of episode two and then he just comes out of nowhere and like springs on them and you're like, okay, and that was it. <laughs> it was and it was right at the tail end of the horn thing, like the horn monster guy who was yeah. staring at the main character through the door, and then he comes in, and then they go outside, and then the spring guy comes. I'm like, who, who are all these characters? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's just, it's so, like, why? Why are we pacing the series like this? I know 
you know, the studio had unfortunate whatever happened there with the funding or, or whatnot, but this really deserved to have more episodes, mm-hmm. a, a much slower pace. This is a horror series. Like, with manga, because you're reading it, you could kind of, like, select the pace that you're going at, right? Because you you can, like, read through it slowly, or if you really want to, you can just... Mm-hmm. Um, but I think for an adaptation like this, it deserved to have more episodes, to have moments breathe, yeah, to have these moments of horror linger, 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 suspense, suspense, and then scare, right? But instead, it's just like, Oh, whoa, 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 what's going on here? Oh, there's a jack in the box. Oh, he's, oh, oh, okay, cool. Uh, oh, wait, the, the it's, <laughs> yeah, it's bizarre. It's so all over the place. Yeah, I, the show, after it ended, I think I was, I was underwhelmed, obviously, because of the way it was presented, but I was also, unfortunately, underwhelmed by, like, where the story goes, and over the, over the past couple of days, it's kind of, it's marinated, and, I just I I really appreciate the creativity and the um cosmic horror of the ending and how it starts to wrap up and it's so unfortunate that the pacing is so bad that some of these ideas that are objectively horrifying that they just get reduced because they go by so quickly you can't even sit with them for a little bit like yeah. those those guys that were in the tornadoes that started to eat the snail people that part is objectively horrifying that people would come to that point that they're so hungry that they're starting to eat people that turned into snails. But you never get the sense that people are starving. Like, you didn't realize that there was a famine. And so when they just yeah. show up and they're like, these human snails taste good. It's like escargot. You should have some. And then everyone's like, yeah, I'm hungry. Let's have some. I'm like, well, if we started out with there's no food, everything's being destroyed. There's not like that would have been really scary because it's kind of like that idea of cannibalism like if you're stuck in the middle of the woods with people and you have no more food left like what do you do next but you never get that contemplation it's just we're all in now i'm not saying i would like the the tornado i don't really like the tornado aspect of the story i don't think i'll like it when i read it either with people controlling tornadoes by like pushing out there i'm like i don't like this but the the horror aspect of those people eating the snail people was really great the row houses how all the people are just living inside the row houses and they've just become an amalgamation of of a being and they start building the row houses to recreate the spiral all of that over the past couple days has like sat with me i'm like that is like really genius it's really out there it's really creative it's really amazing how we fit in all these different ideas and all these different concepts of spirals in our lives and things that we wouldn't even think of Mm. um and and just pulls them all together into this like existential horror where you know we finally get the reveal that it's this entity below the town or this structure below the town that needs to be fed or awakened every couple hundred years or something like that all of that has really marinated well with me but it's it's unfortunate that it it just didn't land in the moment because they definitely could have landed in the moment. oh yeah. that's the thing yeah. it could have landed in the moment yeah it, it it's, it's just so bizarre mm. and not in i'm not talking about the subject matter but just like the way that the studio decided to go about this right i <laughs> talking about how breakneck this pacing is it just feels like it's cut to shit this entire series because there was a moment and there's multiple moments where like little moment little moments of breath or little moments of actions are completely cut out like when the news reporters they their car gets caught in the tornado and it crashes and literally the series it's she crashes and immediately gets out of the car and just starts running towards the city. Like, right. she does, there's no moment where she checks on them. And I I, I could be wrong. I Well, she sees the two people are dead. Like, hmm. she looks in the car, they're dead. And then she's, then she, like, goes to the town. But again, that's like a flash, I remember. Yeah. <laughs> Everything else yeah. I forget. And there was another moment. And I, I, may, I don't know, maybe my PC, I was watching it on my, my laptop here when I, when I watched it. 
and maybe my laptop was glitching, but I swear the moment when they see the gang eating the snails Mm -hmm. and it is her, the, the son, the brother, the little brother and the news reporter. And they go up to them. They're talking with them. And then the dad appears out of nowhere. Like, I swear to God, there is a cut, cut to the biker gang, cut back. The dad is in like right in front of the right in front of them goes, you're not touching my daughter or whatever he says. Yeah. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa where the dad, the dad literally teleported. He yeah. just spawned. Mm-hmm. He just literally, I know he was walking with them beforehand, but then they like scurried off the path and then he just spawned in front of them. So I'm like, I don't know what happened. I don't know if they're cutting little bits to like fit within this runtime, but this already goes over the standard 24 minute runtime that televised television of an episode has so dude i i yeah i was just kind of flabbergasted i don't know if you caught that moment either but i i didn't catch it but the the character work just suffers so much because you mentioned the dad you mentioned the mom the brother all of them essentially die and Hmm. the characters just keep on moving there's no moment where the the character has any time to come to a realization like the parents the dad or mom gets carried away the the her brother turns into a snail and she the next scene she's like okay go be free i'll come back for you the um the original her boyfriend he loses like his whole family and i feel like his character was like building up to something and then since the pacing just started going breakneck he just became just like uh a shut in and he's like everything's going to shit we're gonna die this is the worst thing ever and all the characters just have no more development because so many actions are happening that there's no they can't have any stimulus towards anything because the next thing's already happening so it it it's the characters just go away so by the end you're supposed to have this i guess cathartic moment with the main character and the boyfriend like they give up they embrace the spiral but you're 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 just there and you're like oh okay we're okay we're dying all right all right oh she just saw her parents are dead and she's like no mom dad boyfriend let's spiral (laughs) i'm like okay all right i guess that's the end of the series um and i guess my my main question is was she always the narrator because i always found it weird when the narrator dies at the end but is narrating in the future about what happened hmm. was she the narrator in the manga yeah she i'm um, she actually has more narration bits in the oh, manga okay. i'm like i said i haven't read it in a year or two yeah, yeah. so i could be wrong but i'm i am 100 percent sure like after each chapter after every tale ends and starts she would say something with narration uh but in this she's we have narration from her at the very very the first episode and then at the end of this episode so yeah but i always <laughs> perceived her as the narrator right maybe her ghost lives on <laughs> I was gonna, I in, this, in the spiral of the town yeah <laughs> yeah maybe yeah very unfortunate the it, it feels like they definitely could have just made the tough decision and cut some of these storylines like hmm. the jack in the box just cut it don't even waste time. Don't even waste yeah. the screen time. Just cut it. Yeah. The horn guy in the wall, just cut it. Like, just focus on the main characters, kind of their situations and what's going on around them. And I feel, I, I don't think it would save the show, obviously, but the budget could at least be spread out a bit more economically for the main parts instead of a five-second scene with this jack-in-the-box that needed CGI and it needed this breakdown or the horn guy you needed to draw all those horns and him eating the it's like just cut it like yeah. just cut it and yeah. focus on the big parts because it the whole series just unfortunately um suffers from it and because they try and fit everything in the pacing is just on the wall as we've oh, said yeah. a thousand times yeah. on this episode already yeah I, I feel like there's nothing really much to comment on either because it's just like it's like it's a slideshow. Just, yeah. It's like a slide, you're just like, okay, yeah, that happened. Okay, that happened too. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. That also happened. No, that is the best way to describe it. It's literally a PowerPoint of like, all right, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. This is gonna, okay, okay, now we're at the end. Uh, something really funny. I know people online have been pointing it out. Hmm. 
the moment when uh, Shuichi, I believe his name is, uh, gets uh, taken down and falls down the spiral. It's it's just a PNG that just <laughs> <laughs> no. that so funny. Yeah, yeah, there someone someone did a zoom in of that moment on um the the main the main girl's head when he's falling. It's mm. like a shot behind her, and her head just does like this sporadic, like almost like they moved like the PNG on her head. Yeah. It's like staticky. And I'm sure there's more of those moments that I didn't even catch mm. that there's just terrible little bits of animation. Yeah. But I feel bad because I'm sure the the animators in the studio didn't want to do this. And they obviously were extremely talented because the first episode displayed that in full force. But someone in the in the higher places at Adult Swim didn't want to pay for it. They didn't want to let them do their creative vision they didn't want to give them more more money and i feel like that's unfortunately the story a lot of the time yeah and i know critical made a video about this there has been a really adult swim anime that has been produced by adult swim mm. has had a terrible track record and i don't know what's going on like ninja kamu Kamui, however you pronounce it. I remember I watched the first three episodes. You were hype about that. Show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude. The first three episodes were were hype, and but like you saw a decrease though. Mm. Like the first, I'm telling you though, like the first episode has some of the most gorgeous animation I've ever seen. Mm. Second episode's good. Third third episode, it's good, but I began to see a, a decrease. I'm beginning to see like, okay, what's going on here? And then I ended up dropping it, but seeing what it had to become mm. and at the end it be, just becomes this weird cgi ninja mech show and it's looks terrible mm -hmm. and then you have the rick and morty anime that's yeah. going on which i'm not watching but i've heard is absolutely terrible yeah i heard it looks disgusting <laughs> i heard and then you have uzumaki and these are all adult swim produced mm. so I don't know if if the executives here are linking up with these studios and not giving them the the like the funding for this or or the creative time. Maybe they're just saying like, oh, you only have like a month to do all of this. Well, obviously that's an exaggerated <laughs> number, but I don't know what's going on here. But it's it, they're not on a good track record. Adult Swim. Yeah, I think Adult Swim. It's original content has always been very basic comedy, adult comedies mm -hmm. in animation. Yeah. You know, Rick and Morty is probably their most ambitious when it came to animation. But I think they only want to fund things like that, but they're excited about stories like Uzumaki or Ninja Kamui. And those projects just require more money than an episode of Rick and Morty or an episode of oh god what like robot chicken like all mm -hmm. comedies that they did throughout the years and extremely successful and i'm sure they made a lot of money because they were really cheap to make and they have these huge followings but when you get into stories that are bigger in scale or require not just a character standing still and saying a funny joke like that is money you need to fork over so i'm sure their business model says animated tv show gets this budget for a season and when you look at shows that are like animes it's like well this budget is not going to cut it for uzumaki where it might have cut it for a season of robot chicken so yeah. i think they're probably yeah. just in a transition period but like you said i i would uh i would stay away from any anything that's advertised as an adult swim original yeah. for a couple of years just go in very uh, not optimistic that that's going to turn out well yeah yeah i it's that's really all my thoughts i mean I I we I can't really say much more about this. It's it's a shame. Like I want to say more about it. And if it was like there was also like a part of me that wishes that it was even worse. <laughs> so I could <laughs> so I could really shit on it. So I could really just like yell and scream about it. Mm -hmm. Um but it's just like it's just disappointing. It's just really disappointing and uh I don't have much else to say. Yeah, we have to give a score, Vinny, because it's the end of the season. Oh, <laughs> shit, okay. Uh, God, what would I give this? 
I would say it's only four episodes, so it's not like it wasted that much of my time, which is yeah. which is a huge bo- which is a huge bonus. And the first episode was really good, and I think episode three gave me enough enjoyment for twenty two minutes. Yeah, I don't know. Is a five? Does, is five fine? Yeah. I, th- I think five's fine. It's not the worst thing I've ever seen, but I think yeah. it's just like yeah. very okay. Yeah, I, I was gonna actually also gonna give it a five. Okay, I'm giving perfect. it a low five. Low like five. it's very. It's very like muttered out five out of ten, <laughs> yeah. you know. Uh, yeah, because like you said, at one fourth of this show was incredible, right? <laughs> and then the other three were just barely passable, you know, just mm-hmm. barely. So yeah, yeah, it got the point across, but yeah, it didn't didn't blow me away. If the first episode wasn't as good, then like there wouldn't be any expectations for the rest of them. But because mm-hmm. it was, it just makes all the other ones look that much worse. Yeah, but. That's all we got for Uzumaki. Let us know what you guys thought of this series. Were you as disappointed? Were you a huge fan of the manga before this? Were you introduced to this story through the TV show, unfortunately, like me, and now have to go back and experience the manga in all its glory without the the cutting and the and the terrible animation? Let us know in the comments. Please follow us on all social media platforms. They'll be linked right here in the description. And stick around for more anime. Uh, we'll be talking about Don to Don week to week. Um, we'll be talking probably about the Lord of the Rings anime that's coming oh, out later yeah. this year. Um, we've talked about other animated projects before this. And we're also talking all live action TV movies uh, across the channel. So definitely check those out as well. I've been your host, Mark Yacobino. And it's been I, Vinny Albano. We'll see you on the next one. Peace. This is The Culture.